Okay, today's video is on Loosh, and it turns out it's going to be a pretty, pretty long video. I think. I'm just going to go ahead and get into it best I can. Haven't done any pre-research. Just read these this morning. However, this is where I want to start. That Loosh, when I first heard it, uh, gave me a Gnostic ring. When a word has like a Gnostic ring, it's like, uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with etymology, or I don't think so. It's some kind of etymology, I mean manly or earthly etl etymology, but it's some type of part of the language of light um, to just be able to, it's like you just feel the vibration of a word as it enters. You know, and obviously it has a certain code. Let's imagine a word being like a packet sent over the internet of information. Let's just pretend a word is like that. And, well, that's pretty much what I'm saying. And if there's organic portal created words, they will not have a Gnostic ring. But if there is a Gnostic word, or I don't know how to describe it, like a word that is like natural or part of the universe or from the good side or something like this. Maybe it's from the acacia straight up or I don't know. I have to think about that. But all I know is that some words I feel instantly the Gnostic ring of the word and I understand it immediately. And Lush was one of those. Now this happens with quite a lot of words, you know. Um, the percentage what it happens with is probably less than what it doesn't happen with because we're speaking in English or Babel, Babylonian Babel, and that's why people like Terence McKenna used to say, you know, these psychedelic experiences, they're hard to English because they are, and we're speaking in Babylonian Babel, English, and I won't even go into Spanish and all the other languages. and. You know, Mandarin and Chinese is interesting, but I don't want to go into language theories. Um, so there's this thing I call the Gnostic ring of a word, and Lush, you know, I just immediately understood it. And you can take away the H and replace it with an E and have loose, like loose energy. So that's where I'll begin, that if your Jing energy, your Jing container ability is tight, you will not lose this Qi Lush energy, and the Lush will be Qi chi relative um, because it's not going to be jing relative because that's what happens you know that's primordial energy before you form it in your bottom dan gen to chi or qi and the qi is the loosh like uh, because the chi energy is embedded with like intelligence right it's called life force energy blah 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 but it's embedded with intelligence and that's why sometimes I can feel the Gnostic ring of a word because it's embedded in there and so when it hits my system and my code in my brain schemata and my mind code deprograms it and passes the information I instantly understand the meaning of it because it's, you know, it's been written into my body's code even if I haven't uh, worded it yet or mouth noised it or Englished it yet I have a deeper understanding within of it. So that's the Gnostic ring of a word, and I just wanted to say that I immediately felt it, so I knew one day I'd probably have to explain this to people, because I know some people do not feel reality in this way, and they just, like, they'll read something, and they'll go, yeah, that makes sense, or it doesn't, but they don't truly know a lot of the time. And if you don't fully know and have that feeling of knowing, um, you're not fully encapsulating the light, basically. Anyway, so I figured out also another thing before I forget, because I've got this whole little thing laid out. Um, another thing before I forget is that this is why they stare at you. You know, all you people who know about the Matrix, organic portal, spiritless humans and all this, and the demons coming through them, is because they stare at you to create Lush, because doubt and stuff is part of how Lush is created, and they make they stare at you and stuff, make you think like, what what am I doing? You know, like they look at you like you're doing something. That's why I do not stare at people. One reason I don't stare at people is because I don't need their energy. I'm not a, an energy sucking demon fuck. I don't need to stare at people. I don't need your um, attention. I don't need your um, approval. I don't care if you approve of me. <laughs> and thus, I don't have to stare at people. 
but people who stare at you, you'll notice this, and it's like that, um, the movie, The Shining, where they make that noise, ah! <laughs> it's exactly like that, I think it's that movie, The Shining, right? I've never watched it, but I've always seen people talk about it, but, um, and, you know, I'll throw in a little scene of that movie, oh no, I can't, because I'm open broadcaster, I'm using open broadcaster, so I can't throw in any scenes right now, anyway, so let's just keep going. So it's loose, it's like loose energy that you give off. And so the point is when your jing container is tight and your jing energy is tight, and this happens via grounding, because anionization or anions negatively charging cohere. One negative ion coheres one million water particles, molecules. So think about that, that's strong, one to a million in strength or force correction yeah and this allows you to have indeed that force correction and the force out of the jedi movies is chi energy um and so this is all connected um and loosh is basically like your loose chi and even the taoists they know about um you know that you can lose chi if you watch muntak chia yep and he's my favorite one of the taoist teachings um, if you watch Muntak Chia, you look at him and what he teaches, one of his videos is he teaches you not to lose your energy through your tip of your penis, through um, other orifices in your body. I've also read other people on the internet are aware of this. I remember a year ago reading about someone and, oh, actually, no, they had a video. It wasn't a, a reading. It was a video and they made a video about how, um, I don't know what channel on YouTube, but they were making a video about how you can lose energy out of all the orifices of your body and even through your skin. And I definitely feel this. You know, I'm a shaman. I'm aware of all these sort of things just naturally. And the more I learn, the more I can hone my feeling of them. So it's not just about all meditating. We do have to read other people's thoughts and stuff on it. It really helps. But yeah, I always recommend, you know, you do your own thinking on things and feeling of stuff and don't worry about what someone else left or right of you or ahead or in front of you is or behind you is telling you so loose energy will go into like the official definitions and stuff but yeah so that was a good little tidbit you know that's why they look at you and it's part of that um the doubt the fear You'll, you can feel loose now i really like some of these explanations and we're going to go into this Okay. Let's start actually at the bottom here. Uh, conflict among carbon oxygen cycle units brings forth consistent emanations of loosh. It was as simple as that, and it's from this reading, which is actually the original. Uh, someone, Munro is his name, who had the dream about that Earth is like a big. Uh, energy farm and you can look into these links. I don't want to read all these links fully So I've taken some excerpts that um, are good for me to explain with my knowledge over So I'll knowledge over these excerpts now So the conflict among carbon oxygen as soon as I read it I went oh I see the spark there The spark well, it's interesting. It might relate to the crunch and you know, coming into third dimensional uh, spark or scintillation and particularization, condensation of the light stream. So carbon and oxygen, when I read that one, yeah, those two, uh, they, they, as they cross over they and interact, they kind of, you know, it's like free radical heaven. <laughs> I'll just put it like that. It's the heaven of the free radicals. And, you know, what I was saying before was when you ground and you cohere your force, your life force, your chi, your jing, your wu ji in your head, um, and your shen energy. When you cohere the, the jing and the uh, chi, your shen energy will start to pour out from your heart. Now, at that point, you'll actually be too bright. It's like, that's not the loosh they want. It's That's like over some sort of octave barrier or something like some C, C sharp four musical note octave barrier or something, you know, over the heart and up. It's, um, 
it's like when you start emanating the positive side of those energies and the alkaline chi is, is spurt out and you're not in reversal dissonance, this is forward coherence. And when you're in reversal dissonance, and we'll go into reversal, someone else has actually talked about this, this really good little um, excerpt up here. But when you're in reversal dissonance is where the decay and decoherence of the being begins, yeah? And so carbon and oxygen and free radicalization is like the opposite of coherence in all this, and it can begin reversal loops. And reversal loops correlates to reversal patterns of thought, interfere, negativity spirals, and all of this. And people are suffering big time of this. Some people know they are and can't stop it. Some people deny they are and continue doing it. Um, I awoke from my negativity and I try to be as positive as possible all the time because it makes me feel better. And um, then there's less of this loosh as well, by the way, for them to suck out of you. That was that little point there. When you start emanating Shen energy, it's like the opposite of what they like. Shen energy out of the heart after Qi, what Qi is turned into, which emanates from the heart or the central Dan Gen, the middle Dan Gen, the heart uh, brain or the heart, high heart center, you know, the chakra system. When you start emanating that and in coherence, say you're grounded, standing on the earth, um, your water is fully pure in your body, and which allows your magnetic fields to deeper penetrate the field, um, which means you can suck more jing, create more chi, be more cohered and more alive, and have more life force, etc. Better um, body dynamics, all the way to mental dynamics, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, when I read this, I went, yeah, carbon and oxygen and the whole free radical stuff. Now, it does connect, definitely, because I've noticed everybody in negative thought spirals and stuff creates a, a shitload more positive charge and thus loosh. Um, and the positive charge uh, is, is seemingly created much more in the stress situations and all this. So that's talking about the demiurge that created the so-called third dimension, you know, that would be going into, like... Um, you know, uh, like Lucifer basically is the Demiurge, isn't it? But we're not going to go into that sort of esoteric part of it. Let's start from the beginning. And we can work over, and you'll see what I've just mentioned to, on, to you on higher level thoughts. So I've noticed definitely that, um, uh, as it says here, you know, vibration and frequency, when you start negative spinning in your bottom Merkaba triangle, and like I always say about the organic portals, the spiritless humans are not uh, pro or post in sentient ascension, and uh, you know, they cannot pull all me matter from the field, we are pulling all this matter from the field when we're fifth dimensionally uh, light body in, or when we're, you know, like um, shooting up in through the chakra system, and our crown is open and the um, complete uh, system is active, all the chakras active and, and the, the circle is then made, you know, from the energy coming in and not just, you know, getting caught in the body, it escapes out the crown, you've got the full cosmic, um, cosmic uh, loop or whatever, you know, the cosmic feed of energy, you might say. You're fully connected. So when you're doing that, standing on Earth and stuff, the the loosh, you, you'll feel like less pain and stuff. Like this is equivalent to not putting out as much loosh when the water molecules are aligned and you've got the pure water in your systems filled up. And for instance, the outer layer of your aura, equivalent to the um, lymph system, is clear. You feel the difference, and you have barrier then. With, with a full active aura, you also have barrier against um, loosh sucking. Because remember, you, you're emanating loosh, but what they do is they they like to drill into your aura. They drill, yeah? There's the whole idea of energy sucking and all this, and energy vampires. I'm not going to go deep into the dynamics of that, but to suffice to say this, how this works is that you have uh, an auric field with layers, and the auric layers um, have planar and laminar flows. Lamination, yeah, like you laminate something, and planar, the plane of a surface. So you have the vertical planar flow and the horizontal between the planes of your aura, or the 
the segments of your aura. You have lamina or lamination or you know uh, glue. You have laminar field, uh, ley line fields, and what they do is they try to compress each auric layer, and they'll press them together. This is why I said in my organic portal videos, they need to pull you to the surface to flatten you before they can steal your energy. Um, you have to be second dimensionally flattened, and so they push your auras fields together. Then the laminar flows allow for their transgression of their little uh, tunneling. Um, it allows for the acceptance of outside energy when your auric fields are flattened and the laminar flows are... They're not there. The laminar flows are like part of your chi kung PSI body pressure, pressure per square inch PSI chi kung um, iron shield or iron shirt, they call it in, in Qi energy work and Taoism and stuff. So the laminar flows are part of that and so you, you know, this is why one of my uh, techniques against organic portal um, attack is pierce energy healing and actually pushing energy up through my crown and trying to open the field and push into the aura to extend the laminar push in the laminar field. Um, okay, of the aura. So anyway, let's just like stop there and like read from this and I'll, I'll tell you more stuff as I go. As negative emotional energy, this is all from this link, uh, Bibliothecalopalades. I don't know. That's the same website where I, where the, um, Cassineopia original channel of organic portals is on this website. So this one is just about... Conscious Human Energy, they've called it. Sciencia. Oh, so they might be Spanish-speaking people. Not sure. Okay, so this is from there, all this, uh, all this part here, I think. All of this. Or at least... Hold on. Yeah, okay. There might be another link that this stuff is part of. Anyway. As negative emotional energy, especially the energy of pain, trauma, stress, abuse, and suffering, as, or as Georgie very rightly described it, dreadful louche, it contains the heightened, yeah, and dreadful louche, because it feels dreadful. So I really do like that uh, description of it. You start to feel yourself as dreadful. So that's when you're louching or releasing a lot of louche, and that's when they're going to see you. What, what happens here is, this is all transacted, energy is transacted on the fourth dimension emotional uh, fields. And in the fourth dimensional context where energy is tangential, you can have infinite variety of experience and all emotion, blah, 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 any depth of emotion, etc. So the dreadful loosh has no limit. If they can get you into the spiral, they can push you to death. Um, and take all of as much energy as you've got to give. That's how far it can go. Um, let's see here. Before we go into the next line, because I like that, I'm, I'm amazed, really happy that this got said. Because I may not have uh, been able to say it so eloquently for uh, for uh, a few years, maybe. I'm glad that that came to this person in that in that sort of uh, the way it's written. Anyway. Uh, dreadful loosh, yeah, so you'll feel when you're looshing and losing this energy, yeah, because say you go work out or something and you're very focused and then you'll drink and you'll extend your fields into the, uh, you'll extend your magnetic fields further into the field of being and become more sentient, become more conscious, become uh, all these things. Um... As you do that, you, you'll feel the coherence, and you'll actually you can start to feel when you're losing energy and, and when you're not. And you know, vibration has everything to do with this because when I mention a laminar flow, a planar auric flow, there is they have vibrational consistency. That's also what we're talking about a lot. That is a massive theme coming through this consistency of energy. Yeah, to stop the decoherence and deconsistency, or the losing of the louche, or the louche. 
So anyway, it contains the heightened molecular content and organic hormonal adrenaline cortisol cascades coursing through the quantum dynamics of blood, body, and brain systems. Let's just take it off from here. When you are grounding, I have said that your blood really enjoys the ultraviolet light, pink spectrum light for healing and killing of bacteria and stuff like this as well. But it's a raising of vibration. And it just seems to love that pink light. It's like there's a different light of Earth that is a light blue light, which is also something else I could talk about. That is a beautiful energy. Anyway, so it's different. Let's not sidetrack Ben. So that the point is that ultraviolet light is very. If you look at the the vibration of it compared to the other light spectrum lights, or I don't know. Uh, visible light spectrum, the gamma, etc. Obviously gamma is the most, the fastest vibrating and the smallest um, one. But the ultraviolet, okay, so, um, you know, this connects to the quantum dynamic workings of, you know, your blood and, like, it's it's the level of sentience there. Your, your cells communicate actually, not just in infrared, but ultraviolet, they communicate in different light bands, like they talk to each other like that. So when you can disrupt that, you can disrupt your coherence of your cells talking to each other even, yeah? So this is this lotion, and it is dreadful because it can, it's like a type of decoherence that just can completely fuck the whole system. The degradation of the being begins, hence, you know, So this is interesting, because they've related, you know, physical stuff to metaphysical stuff, yeah? The cortisol cascades. Now, we know cortisol is like a stress hormone. When I was at university, I used to release a shitload of that, and that's when I was being attacked the most by organic portals, because I'm in a computer room with people just sniffing and shit, and, you know, when they sniff, they're trying to get your attention. And they're also they're mimicking, like my nose where the governor channel meets the functional frontal channel now either they were just trying to cut me off at the at that point at the top of your front teeth there or just because i was ungrounded for hours on the computer uh the flow ceased in that area making me vulnerable and that's what i forgot to mention before when you descend into uh negative energies it's like all of a sudden they can see you in their dimension. You know, the reptilians, the blah, 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 all this interdimensional like energies and, and all these demon things sucking our energy, all these pro proposed ideas of these beings who, you know, proposedly suck our energy from these dimensions, and yes, they do, and I agree, I'm just saying it that way. They see you when you become apparent. They don't see you when you're unapparent in a high vibration. It's like there's a point or a threshold or a next eye where your vibration is not seeable to them. You ra And I propose that that point is equivalent to raising into the, the light body out of the feeling body, which is equivalent to raising out of the fourth dimensional duality um, into the fifth dimensional unification sort of zone or dimension. So this is where things are not dual in nature. For one, um, the fifth dimension is like the Planck length, string string theory zone, loop and warp of web, the field, yeah, where it is like a crystalline uh, membranic substance to be first physicality of catching the uh, upper dimensional immaterial light of the seventh dimensional, the eighth dimensional coding and embedment, how it's going to be embedded, the information, you know, and then you get physical form in the third dimension, like a zonal reality, a particularization. I don't want to go further into the dimensions, but I'm glad that they connected these because adrenochrome is one reason that the elites are practicing the whole uh, eating dead, uh, eating babies and, and, you know, the live sacrifice and 
I'm very glad that that's coming out now. If you've been paying attention in the last two years, it's been discovered that the the people on top of the world, like we're talking lords in the English houses, we're talking like the Clintons, uh, you know, the president of one of the former presidents of the United States. We're talking those type of people are involved in literal ritual sacrifices and literal Satanism and all this, and that's all coming out now. I can't wait till they're actually up there in the in the court. Let's see that happen soon because they are falling, and I've heard that they're they're definitely falling apart finally. Anyway, so they do those blood sacrifices and stuff because the adrenochrome. Now anything with chromium, magnesium, metal dynamics has spark or scintillation is what is also conductive, and in conductivism is in, in electricity what I've told you before is embedded information that is both how there is a creator God or whatever and creation is self intelligent okay at the same time okay so anyway the dreadful loosh it contains the heightened molecular content in organic hormonal adrenaline cortisol cascades how so how does it contain that well the way that reality works, because you have not been taught how it works, is through a down-dimensional or densification of light system. Light is basically densified from the highest you know, regions possible to what we see as physicality and the second dimensional edge in the third dimensional zonal realities. A particle is a perfect example of a zonal reality. Your life is a zonal reality. Your body, your cell is a zonal reality. It's its own little reality. Okay, A zonal reality, that's the third dimension. So within that is encapsulated everything from the higher dimensions. So when you have a molecule, it has embedded six-dimensional geometric archetypy and... Um, Fibonacci sequence is a great example of that, and I always use that. Mandelbrot is another example of, of a six-dimensional, uh, infinite, timeless, um, not archetypy, but uh, manifest. Sorry, I've lost the word. <sighs> Fundamental me metamorphic paradigm and... Um, geometric archetypes and so on. Okay, that's the six dimensional zone of reality, you might say, or the sixth dimension. Um, so that, that everything is in and the, the seventh dimensional material, immaterial, sorry, light. We know physically we can see with our eyes, in front of our feet, in front of our nose, our body, physically, we can see that schematica is what schematica? It is immaterial sound making shape and form. So there is no contestation. You cannot say maybe, if, but. We know for sure, a hundred ways from zero, many perspectives that sound creates matter. Yeah? So when we're talking of loosh and stuff and energy piercing of your aura, this has all got to do with vibration, but also sound. Sound is vibrational. Okay, I'm speaking to some people because they don't seem to know this. I know a lot of you listening will know all this off by heart. But some people are, are not connecting these dots, and I think these are the most important dots ever to connect, like people like, uh, what's his name, Nikola Tesla said, you know, if you want to understand the universe, think in the terms of vibration and blah, blah, blah. So, frequency and vibration. So, the loosh contains the height and molecular content. How? Well, the universe works in descending harmonics and ascending harmonics. So when you're ascending harmonics, you seem to be clearing systems. If I want to clear my crystals, my amethyst necklace, I'll, I'll go like this. I'll go clink, clink, clink. Just the vibration going through the necklace will clear the field of that. I can feel the difference. It's less stiff around my neck. The reason it got stiff is from collecting all the negative energy. Isn't it funny? All the all the little synchronistic uh, connections and uh, similarities. You know, like it's funny that uh, you can you can 
clear the net place this way and, and clear your body that way and I don't know, things like that are funny and um, you don't need to just put it in salt now I'm getting a little bit off track there, I lost my thinking, sorry but I really like this because when when a when a embryo or a human is created you will see and you'll notice a massive spark of light and zinc is relative um, when you burn magnesium in lab class you know in science class at high school whatever you burn these things like uh, what is it phosphorus magnesium all these things they burn bright and it like burns your eye yeah well obviously there is light contained there and um, it's just like quantum mechanics is contained within classical physics you know even though classical physics is kind of like a farce we all say that you know the, the content and the 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 edge of stuff or you know ever you've heard this before it's all an illusion you know physical reality is illusionary Anyway, let's get back on track. How is it contained in there? Through um, harmonics. Um, let me think. Harmonics, you know, they create the geometric pattern. So the seventh on to the sixth. And, you know, the, there is no gap. There's no real separation between the dimensions kind of thing. They're embedded. And it's like, you know, the sixth dimensional grid lays on top of the fifth dimensional membrane. And then it passes through that next eye. And you have fourth dimensional tangential energy. And how is this relative, Ben? Well, if you have a lot of tangential energy uh, in the way of stress, you're going to produce more stress tangential, you know, in, in the way of a vectorization of energy. Before that, there is, there is not a sideways movement of energy before the fourth dimension. So, what sideways movement of energy? That's clearly decoherence, not coherence. It's atrophy, it's more akin to atrophy than it is to uh, even entropy, and especially vector. Right? Vector would go with the, the analogy of um, coherence, yeah? So anyway, back to how it's embedded. Well, I don't know, maybe I could uh, go much more into depth, into depth of, you know, that. But um, there will be things that we don't know yet um, because we don't inspect this part of reality. There will be, like, systems like the Fibonacci is one, you know, the Fibonacci spiral. That's a system of how energy clearly is embedded in trees and in the length of your arm to your hand and all this stuff. So, you know, just because I don't know doesn't mean I'm wrong, but um, from a higher, from the top level I understand it, you know, ascending harmonics, descending harmonics, stuff like this, embedment, how it embeds is what we've still got to discover by around 2032 when humanity moves to seventh dimensional perspective more, we will start to understand particle physics much better and also at the concurrent time, things like what I'm talking about, like how systems uh, create, you know, like uh, it's hard for me to explain, I've seen many um, system explanations and you know, you need diagrams, so really on this video this is hard to explain the actual dynamics, maybe I'll make another video one day. But it's just suffice to say that that is, like, in my opinion, um, you know, higher dimensionality is embedded in lower dimensionality, and the higher dimensions add on to the lower dimensions, and the lower dimensions have the effect of grounding out the higher dimensional energies. So, yeah, I'm really happy that they wrote that in there. So, all you need to know is that, you know, your hormonal energy and stuff can go upward as well. I've had this idea that, yes, the universe creates down dimensionally, but I've had this idea that there is upward dimensional feedback system, and even just through decoherence. If you can imagine the universe working down through the dimensions very nice and coherently, nothing out of the ordinary happening, the universe is doing its thing, 
And then when the energy gets to the third dimension and is like flattened and spread out, I can imagine, you know, the positive charge, the decoherence of systems, atrophy, all this stuff, you know, and this is very obvious because we die, we decay, yeah. And it's funny if we go back to the first thing I mentioned was oxygen and carbon, you know, but the oxygen, you know, relating that is, you know, oxygen and the free radicals, like I was saying, creates decoherence. So this is all related to louche. Let's keep moving on because I don't want to keep getting stuck there. I feel like I'm getting too stuck, so I'm just going to move on for you guys. So yeah, vibration and frequency is uh, huge. It may be that, uh, this is what I feel, there's like a nexus of, maybe it's the C-sharp 4 note, I don't know. Um, but there's like an XI of like negative and positive, and there has to be, right? Because on a spectrum, there is a middle of a spectrum. So when we have a musical spectrum, there must therefore be a middle point to the spectrum. So that XI is what I'm talking about. So you can find the XI and um, learn when you're in negative downward spins or upward positive spirals in your own frequency. Notice how it relates to thinking, all sorts of things, coherence of brain waves, lots of stuff. Okay, vibration and frequency in them, in humans and animal earthlings, are key to loose entrapment dynamics and emancipation from it. And that is a very important point the emancipation, the emancipation from the entrapment in the loose. Okay, so if you want to learn more about this, you can just go to this website. At the same time, these energies are perceived as dreadful louche by all dark entities nowadays. Judging from the recent peak in their reckless behavior, or definitely agreed, irrational, heinous deeds, definitely the recklessness and how they like don't mind being dark, as they can no longer support this positive louche onslaught, and that's what I was talking about, that when you cohere your gene and you start shooting out um, really strong chi, you start making strong chi and you're shooting out strong uh, shen energy, that's positive loosh, okay? So this person is onto it, wherever this, I think it's from this, it might be from another article, um, as they can no longer support the positive loosh that we're unleashing, you know, from the cos conscious revolution that's happening in the vibrational uh, frequency raising, etc and must express their darkness in any conceivable manner. Yeah, I've definitely noticed them going all out in the last few years. It's like no one is hidden. Um, as to relieve their inner pressure and pain caused by high frequency energies cascading into the crumbling system. That's also what I've noticed, that um, when you're vibrating very high frequency out of yourself and in a higher octave than someone else, just by default, doesn't matter if they're like evil or something or not, just by default, um, they will, the lower energy field sucks the higher energy field, okay, so that's another thing I've noticed, and another thing relative to what they're saying here is that the high fr caused by the high frequency energy cascading into them and into the system, by, like, that's got to do with the pierce healing I mentioned in How to Heal from Organic Portals. Pierce healing, that's seventh dimensional healing, sound healing in a higher way rather than expressing uh, sound in your voice box. That's another way of uh, lower dimensional, third dimensional sound healing and actually cascading it through the system. But first you want to pull from the seventh dimension into your light body higher frequencies, then you can express from the fifth dimensional light body into your voice box and your uh, your uh, fifth chakra, the, uh, the um, throat chakra. Anyway, I've noticed that, yeah, it causes them pain when you, if you pierce into them high frequency energy, if you do the opposite of what they do, when they are energy sucking you, they are pulling through a little, uh, a little uh, sucker, but what you can do is through a little, uh, let's, I'm just imagining a little beam of light, you know, going from my forehead, <laughs> just something like that, when you're pushing back the other way, and that's what we do, because we're emanating, remember they're pulling back into the darkness, they are atrophy, pulling from the head of the flow, yeah, P 
people who are of the light like me are the head of the flow, yeah. So, um, when you're pushing that higher energy into them, I've noticed they become very uncomfortable and it's not even like a tele... It doesn't have to be a telepathic, like, pierce energy pushing of your high frequency into them. It can be uh, as simple as speaking new information or Neo, being Neo. Uh, you will consider new information in front of them and they will have every schism you've ever seen in a human body in front of you. They will uh, ignore, suddenly become completely unconscious around you. They'll ask you the questions which you're answering to them in the sentence after you just answered it to them, proving they're not listening, and completely they've gone, you know, they're completely unconscious, they've gone somewhere. Now when this is happening, this is the same thing um, as if you were to telepathically just put the high frequency stream on onto someone, because it's the new information, it's obviously come from the higher source, because we're always being pulled from the high, from the future, so to speak. From the infinite timeless highest domain we're also always being pulled up we're being pulled through negative energy you know? ne and negative energy is like a foundation for positive creation this is going to be mentioned in my video how to use organic portals because they are negative energy base and we are positive creation springing forth from that anyway that's another topic so just by the simple um, act of speaking the word yeah, hence the word of God, speaking the word, or Neo, being Neo, uh, and being new, and speaking the new word, um, you will be able to tell, um, not necessarily who's an organic portal around you, because you might, you know, just hit someone's dissonance, and they might be a soul to them, but you might just hit their dissonance, so it's, this is why it's so hard to tell who organic portals are, you know, the world we live in is, is very greyed out, very mixed up and greyed out, not clearly defined. It's it's very difficult to tell who uh, who's spirited or not in some regards, because spirited humans are not using that spirited nature. Actually, I can uh, suck out all my energy inward when I'm around organic portals. I often do that in the system in society in daily life um, to not draw attention to myself. Because you, if you're emanating a very high frequency, often you will um, draw the well all the time. You will draw the attention of the uh, the um, agents of the matrix, yeah, Smith, and the agents of the matrix, which come through the organic portal people. Anyway, so I've noticed just by the simple act of speaking the word, basically you might summarize it as speaking the word will make them physically schism, mentally abhorate, mentally uh, apparition, mentally disconnect, blah blah blah. You'll see them right in front of you doing this and they'll physically move their body as you'll, as the, the words you're speaking go in and clear out what was blocking all their blocks, um, what was blocking that new word. And they do not have a good reaction to this. I might one day talk more on that. Anyway, let's move on. As a type of spiritual energy identified by, by Monroe, capitalized upon by the secret services and black ops, most definitely. It's very interesting. Like, I don't even have to go into alien theories or anything, but all the, like, secret service black op type people that I've ever seen, because I'm gang stalked as fuck, they, they're very dark. Man, they're dark. And you see it, it's in their demeanor. Like, their eye, how they're looking at you. It's like the most obvious thing in the world. I don't need proof. Look for yourself. Um, you know, the way they look at you, it's hectic. But, um, yeah, so definitely um, this is one way people like me say that they can smell a cop a mile away, you know? <laughs> and that's when it's said also in, in equivalent to uh, animals can smell fear, yeah? Well, that is louche relative. The smell of fear, that's louche. Smell. Smell of louche. However, what is smell? It's also just an electrical stimuli, yeah? It's not some duality blob that is not part of the electrical universe, yeah? 
the duality blob is electrically embedded and is made from electricity, funnily enough, even though it doesn't seem like it. Anyway. Okay, upon the secret side bracket, exploited as a social engineering utility by the interdimensional negatives, Lush essentially is the earth plane's lower dimensions and the trauma energy of the human and animal emotional body. Agreed. For example, via the, and that's why I said it's relative, the animal body, and let's take out emotional, just put animal body, if that's why I said it's relative to, uh, and I'll, I didn't say this, but acidic chi. Acidic chi is the reversal, and we're about to go into reversal, uh, the idea of reversal, and I'll try and maybe talk about reversal dynamics, which is just descending harmonics. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, that's not the same thing, sorry. One second, let me take a breath. Pranam. Yam. Pranam. As soon as you release, you will get, um, as soon as you release any lower energy on your nervous system, it will hit dense bodies or organic portal people and they will react with sniffs, coughs and so on as well. That's another little point because that just happened right then. Uh, so the animal body. Um, you know, we've talked about how stuff has non-physical stuff or stuff has intangible essence embedded in it and the animal body in this instance, relative to Lush, and relative to what I said before, the relativism is the positive charge, decoherence, and the free radical stuff. And what I've noticed is everybody, every single person I've ever seen, like suffering, all pain has got to do, uh, all, all pain has got to do with positive charge and inflammation is behind every disease or dis-ease and inflammation comes stems off free radicals and positive charge so the point is that free radicals and, and positive charge energy in the body is I won't say the culprit but the the medium of which we can save ourselves from being loosed and sucked okay so grounding or anionization is going to be the major fundamental healing tool. Also clean water, blah blah blah, positive thinking, stuff like this, but grounding, okay? Because out of grounding, you'll actually get the release of water from your cells, you'll actually get positive thinking. So grounding is the, the kind of be all end all part of it, of the healing of this and the stopping of losing, uh, getting your energy sucked. Uh, not only is the negative loosh highly co coveted, but most cr crucially of all, it is absolutely necessary for probably for probably most negative entities. Yeah, I feel that too. How do I feel that and see that? Well, you can just see. All you have to do is see, like, if a reptilian is um, on the edge of your ceiling in his little cloak in the astral when you're astrally when you're astrally seeing in the hypnagogic state um, and so you see this cloaked fucking reptile fucker in the corner of the room or whatever and notice its look now this is telepathic yeah so this is, is inferral yeah and this is why science is always lagging yeah and why the third dimension is always lagging behind the fifth dimensional. People who are fifth dimensional have information before third dimensional people. What's a third dimensional person? It might be an old lady stuck in her home, disconnected from society. A fifth dimensional might be a traveling uh, young person who is just getting all the information of the new or the neo. Yeah, there's a different, a quick, a quip of a difference of a third dimensional person and a fifth dimensional person in a context uh, which is probably very advanced, so it was a bad example, but yeah. Anyway, still an example that's uh, good. New speak! 
<laughs> I'm babbling. So I gotta try to stop babbling. So the telepathic uh, part is where you'll stop babbling. And when you see, for instance, one of these negative ET entities or whatever, or extra dimensionals, whatever you want to call them, EDs, um, notice what they're looking at. They look at they, they don't appear to be directly looking at your eyes, your body, your body language. They don't appear to be doing any of that sort of thing. Organic portals will do that stuff, okay? They're on the lower end. Psyops, black ops people will do that to try and control you, to figure you out. But the higher dimensional entities, the negative ETs or whatever, they, they, you'll notice them when they're looking at you. They're looking in, it's like they're looking past you, but not past you, inside past you. It's like they're looking past your outer shell into you. That's what it looks like every time I've seen them look at me. Um, and so obviously they're looking, they're concentrating on your louche, I've realized now, and they're looking at your louche. Now, this is what I said before, that you don't become apparent to them before you become apparent to them. What does that mean? Well, when you start to create a lot of positive charge, you become um, reversal dissonant, you become all these things, you, bad energy, releasing cascades, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, you become suddenly apparent in their dimension, in their domain. They suddenly see you as like a cloud of energy, right? And this is the louche. Um, and they see that, and so they're seeing you as a cloud. It's like upside down world. There's like some, oh, it was like a TV series or something. I watched a few of them, and she she goes. Uh, I think the the kid, the boy, gets lost behind the wall. It's like this dark, like venom-looking entity chasing him. The mum goes crazy, smashes through the wall, trying to get to the other dimension. I don't know what it was called. It's like that. Um, it's like you become apparent in their dimension, and then they, they see you as that cloud. That's why I realize it's not even looking at me, it's looking at my energy. One of these uh, reptilian fourth dimensionals. So, uh, it's got to do with positive charge massively. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Not only is the negative loosh highly covered, blah, blah. Probably uh, for enabling, it's um, used for, it's very necessary for the negative entities for enabling and facilitating existence in the earth planes. Yeah, I have a feeling that's relative exactly to what I was just talking about. That fourth dimensionally is what these guys call the earth planes, clearly, because they set up there in brackets lower dimensions, which is the fourth dimension. Anything below the fifth dimension is considered what people consider, the spiritual people consider a lower dimension. Me too, yes. Um, and that's what they mean by the earth planes, the lower dimensions. So that's the fourth, third, second, first, okay, um, dimensions. So it enables them to exist in the fourth. They may be trying to now manifest themselves via existing there in the fourth now. So coherently, because we are giving them so much louche that they've been able to see the third dimension. Like, they can literally see into our uh, physical third dimensional life now. There's, the, the veil is thinning. It's like the opacity of the veil for them is thinning as we feed them more. So it's very dangerous what we're playing with at the moment. Um, I do believe we, we kind of win in the end, but... Right now, it's like they're at their strongest, um, in my opinion. The, the dawn is darkest, uh, it's darkest before the dawn. So right now, before, you know, the release of their bullshit and, like, basically the light piercing them from the inside out, uh, and the dark veil of earth really piercing and, and fully dissipating, basically. This dark veil will fully dissipate soon, Right now, it's like they're, they're going to all-out extremes, like they mentioned up here. I've noticed that. They're just going to all-out extremes because they know they're losing hold. But in another sense of what I was saying, they seem the interdimensionals are not losing hold. It's the earthly people like the, you know, the CIA, the, the bad guys on Earth, which are losing control, the lower aspects of this whole thing that's going on, the whole you know, taking over of Earth. Um... The, the thing I see is that 
it's like they uh, have more access to trying to create themselves physically and that would indeed correlate with this whole D-wave quantum computer stuff and all of the uh, uh, transhumanism agendas of the elites. Um, it would relate to that somehow. I just don't know, are they going to create a giant reptile? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it's relative. Um, and, and connected is what I mean by relative. Um, in cohorts. Uh, anyway. So their existence in the Earth planes, what they mean is, is their existence fourth dimensionally there and third dimensionally, if that's possible. And they're trying to make that possible. They're trying to figure out how they can bridge from their universe of just being thought form and they don't have a, a, a body. You notice the uh, interdimensionals, they are thought form without time cell. Okay. We also exist up there and that's got to do with your light body and why the light body is so complex. This is also known as the Christ body and the return of Christ. People like me having a light body and pulling from earth and basically the light body is instilled by the earth. So you need to ground. Grounding is the central axiom to all of the stuff happening today. Healing from it, figuring it out, whatever. Okay, as well as for the ability to hold the human form so they don't slide into shape-shifting. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I would have to agree that somehow, like, the shape-shifting when they do that is, like, when they're not holding the third-dimensional, second-dimensional barrier very well. And we've talked about physical stuff. That's the second-dimensional edge of a zonal reality. A molecule has an as a round particle. We think of the electrical field emanating as the edge of reality or the second dimension. It's the flat land. Okay, um, I was trying to relate that. Um, yeah, so when they shape shift, and I've seen this before, um, it's when the energy protrudes from the fourth into the, into the third and actually onto the second. And I don't know how they do this. It's just the same, I guess, as how creation creates through frequency and vibration and the tunneling, you know, the specific tunneling of, I don't know, it's all maths and stuff. I don't want to get into this because I'll have separate lectures on, you know, geometry and how stuff creates, but everything is moving light, yeah? And everything has these systems of, like, the Fibonacci is one way one uh, six-dimensional system of creation, of geometrical um, creation, how something is manifest and densified, the path it follows. So I, I don't know exactly how that they become flat on the second dimension and what actually what that equivocates to is you actually seeing them or the whole thing when people say they're shape-shifting, that's, you can't see them in the fourth unless you view with your third eye, but um, what you'll see is then b somehow the veils uh, break down and you'll actually be able to see them and that's what's called shape-shifting. And so that's interesting what they're saying here. Um, yeah, with, uh, what are they saying? So the loosh allows them... Ah, it would be through mimicry, yeah. So the loosh has, remember, our, left, our leftover information from things like this when you're stressed, but what they haven't mentioned is not just this stuff, not the hormone stuff that they, that would be like the thick meat of the louche for them, but then there'd be also like the vegan parts of the louche, <laughs> to analogize, you know, and there'd be parts of the louche which are just like um, information, you know, and that isn't just like the meat for them to eat, so to speak, like this would be the meat of the louche, they'd love that part, the, the stress, um, embedded in the cortisol and stuff, you know, and that's just a vibrational consistency embedded in the cortisol, so that's how you can see it, we don't have to go into every last little dynamic of how stuff works, but yeah, and so the point is that the, that might be the meat, but there'll be, say, a vegan aspect to it, <laughs> uh, where there's just like a information or something, you know, like a an embeddement of intelligent information, and that uh, that is the part that allows them to hold down the ability of second dimensional form, is what I'm saying. So that's interesting they've mentioned that. That's cool. 
So we're all seeing this in different perspectives and different sort of ways we're explaining it. So I hope you're, you're sticking with me here and you can understand what I'm saying and I'm giving you the, a new uh, perspective into this. Or adding on to what you know. So yeah, I can see that. That, that intelligent information just helps them like hold the information. Uh, because everything is just information, second dimensional, an object, a metal ruler in front of you, a, a jumper, I don't know, a fork. It's information, you know, um, there's little particles in there moving around and all this, and it's all informational. So when they have that intelligent information, which is embedded in Qi and Mush, um, that allows them to, when they descend or densify, and so that you can see them uh, where they, when they uh, protrude through the veils, so to speak. Um, that's them losing the loosh and it's losing the veilism. So their ability to veil and second dimensional form, they're saying here, comes from loosh. And all I'm saying is, yeah, how that must happen. It must be because the chi has that intelligent information, and then they they have that, they know it, and then so then they they use that the information that is there. So that it's like uh, I'm just thinking of a way to explain it. Uh, so then they know the Fibonacci, you know. Then they understand the Fibonacci as an example. Okay, cool. Let's move on. And then they can mimic that energetically, yeah, and create that hologram thus. The holography can be displayed. Anyway, apparently because of the vibrational difference and when they don't have loosh, they can't display the hologram, which is when you see them accidentally shape shift through, okay? To conclude and wrap that all up. Apparently because of vibrational difference in frequency levels, there is a fundamental psychological incompatibility which our negative loosh neutralizes for them. Yeah, and which even enhances their energetic stamina and function in the earth and lower dimensions. Yeah, definitely. When you're shenning and you're shooting out like positive energy that they don't feed on, um, it's actually what I think the sun might feed on. It's like a feedback for God or something. I don't know. Anyway, so when you're positively shooting out energy like that, um, what they're saying here is the opposite, that when you're negative lucian, then they can grab onto that, that's what I'm saying, when you positively charge, they suddenly see your field of energy, or your loosh, and then um, that allows them to bridge and create veilism, like we just mentioned, or holography, which if they don't have much loosh, they can't create much holography, and thus you see them shape-shifting, because they've like, lost power to veil, <coughs> to, in order to veil the need loosh, is what we just discussed, uh, and it's like the veiling is the the uh, the the, um, the sitting on the the third dimensional or uh, the second dimensional flat. Okay, anyway, let's move on. I might be confusing some people. I totally understand what I'm saying. Okay. So because of the vibrational difference in frequency levels, there is fundamental f psychological incompatibility. You know, that's why people say don't try and wake up organic portals, people like Left Side of Brain on YouTube. And I agree with him. It's like almost impossible to wake up organic portals. There are possibilities when we are talking in the realm of psychedelics and super intelligent um, epiphany and basically giving them the, the right epiphanies. But you have to be skilled Someone like me could do it, but it's, I find it hard. Have I awakened organic portals? Oh, I'm not going to go so far as to say I have done that, no. Could I if I tried hard enough? Perhaps. Um, vibration and frequency in them, in humans and animal earthlings, are key to Lucia's entrapment dynamics and emancipation from it. That's right, so you can raise your frequency past this next eye where they can't see you in their realm. And they start, it's like what David Icke said, why they can't get him. David Icke said they can't get him because he's at a different frequency. And the first time I heard him, I immediately understood it. <laughs> at first I was like, 
Oh yeah, because I first, you know, the first thought was a dumb one of what do you mean, and then immediately the thought came of oh yeah, I get it. The first real thought, you know, not the dissonance. The real thought was yeah, I get it. It's like uh, moving past the fourth dimensional louche. So this is how vibration and frequency is key to moving past um, them being able to uh, suck from you in a reversal acidic chi fashion. If you raise your frequency, you'll be producing alkaline chi and you're having a forward momentum push um, upward and through the system of the chakras and um, an outward auric push. And this will emancipate you okay, from the entrapment dynamics. Anything and everything within society that can be manipulated through mind control and social programming to cultivate and reap negative louche, even in a cheerful, mundane, day-to-day -day experience, as well as ordinary, unhappy life, of course, and especially to harvest it in the premium form of blood and flesh via the terror of ritual sacrifice. Why they say the premium form is because, like I said before, it's like the real meat, like in the blood, yeah, it, it's thicker. The louche is real thick. It's concentrated there. Um, as opposed to in the positive charge field. You're releasing loose into your positive charge and, and you're leaking uh, chi, they say. Um, that's equivalent to leaking chi. Um, but it's like more ephemeral. It's not as concentrated. It's not as thick. That's what I was saying before, you know, the adrenochrome, the adrenaline, hormones, cortisol stuff, that's the thick end of louche, they love that, um, and it's, it, it's less energy, it's more form, that's the point, they seem to want to bridge into form, like I've been trying to explain, they're trying to basically take over the electromagnetic spectrum as well, you can surmise, okay, anyway, Okay, just examples, and yeah, definitely hospitals, the battlefields, child abuse, trauma, blah, blah, blah. But this stuff is what you've got to morph. They're the obvious ones, yeah. You can walk into there, and your vibrational field is instantly lowered. Just like when you walk into a city, when you've been out in nature for a long time, you instantly notice how low people are vibrating and how... Um, anxious they are and stuff. As soon as I sit out in, if I go meditate for two weeks out in nature, I come back. I don't have a thought of anyone else. I don't even want to look at people. I don't care what anyone's doing. Completely self-centered, trying to create what I think is coming through me. But when you live in the city, I've noticed it's the exact opposite. It's a complete static resonant zone of non-expression. And this is the draconian plan, static resonance zones. It's called a city or a concrete jungle. Even though concrete conducts and can be negatively charged, people are walking around in shoes, yeah? So you're electrically disconnected, so no deal. <laughs> you're not getting any intelligent energy, any electricity from the earth. Anyway, yeah, so these things, money worries, blah, 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 all this. Look, I have this thing where I think that DMT can be created by extreme worry. So I do wanted to say that, um, and DMT, you know, can be like a positive thing, but also shamans will say that it's, uh, you know, into the underworld thing, DMT. However, other people call it the spirit molecule. So there's a few perspectives to the whole DMT thing. Um, but yeah, I have, in my own experience, felt like I can create, secrete more DMT when I have this intense existential worry, and it's only existential worry. That's not what this is. Uh, money worries and stuff, this is like not existential, this is like surface stuff, okay? So there is a difference, um, you have to hone your skill in this, hone your realisation, okay? So there's all pretty obvious, yeah? Yeah, vengeance, I, even, I suffer from that sometimes, I want to get people back. When I go meditate, I have no vengeance left, I forgive everyone instantly. 
have no resentment. I'm like, meh. But you build these things up in the city environment and through, you know, negative people and all this, and we're not going to go into that. But you build this up, I've noticed, in city environments, in urban environments too, just around a lot of people, because there's something called the surface virus. I call it the surface virus, um, and it's a cross current. If you imagine that the universe has a vector called evolution, it's called a vector, a linear time vector. It's moving in a direction and it's evolving along that, yeah? <sighs> this is a forward momentum, not a reversal, okay? So, a reversal network is something we're going to talk about now. Our reversal networks are collecting life force from collective field of all Earth inhabitants and creating more black force and miasm, miasma, or miasm, in the planet by sending energy, energetic currents into reversal patterns. This is uh, the Black Alliance's main doing and theme and what they do. All who are part of the Black Alliance are all who attempt to create a denser, slower, more restrictive reality. They're all about control. Um, and these that's the dark side. These are the dark people. They don't see themselves as dark. They think they're the light grid because they're controlling bad stuff happening. But they're stupid to the fact that bad stuff happens for adversarial nature and content of creation. Or that there is a, a dual spectrum and you go from left to right to go forward and you create out of adversarial nature evolution occurs and they fail to see this and they're always trying to fight against the flow they this is the fake light grid they are the black alliance okay and it's always got to do with control people who are enlightened like myself we do not try to control we try to enlighten and just say we try to show and say and speak it you know, tell them uh, you know, it's an intelligent way, not a forceful way. Um, and that's how you can tell that they don't know. Anyway, into reversal patterns and synthesizing them into AI machinery. Well, this is very interesting. They're connecting it to the AI and the transhumanism agenda and all this. Um, remember, when you have a brain chip in you, you're going to be completely hackable, so to speak, you know, as a rough, you know, example. You know, when they have more devices in, on, and around you, you become more controllable. Anyway, we can refer to the re reversal pattern as an anti-life pattern, definitely, which also means anti-Christ, blah, 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 yes. Creates blockages, all right? And disconnect that person from the, uh, from the organic supply of eternal energy. This is the most important part of anything being said here today in this talk. It's why I emphasized grounding, because that is the reconnection or the concurrent connection. And the whole bad stuff in the world is all created via disconnection. Okay? From the eternal energy God and all this stuff. You can tell I, I speak with God in, in a, a lower tone because I'm not a Christian. I'm not a, a religious control freak idiot. I'm a spiritual person who realizes from within. Um, and I get visions and stuff. I'm a shaman and all this too. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, disconnected that person from the organic supply of eternal energy. This is why they stare at you. This is why they uh, seek to control you and... The main part, get your attention. Why don't I want anyone else's attention? I don't really give a fuck. Like, I'm only putting these videos up not for attention videos like this. I do some attention videos so I can get viewers on YouTube, yeah? It's different to seeking people's attention when I'm walking around and in everyday life. That's what they do because that's how you get energy from someone where attention goes, energy flows, yeah? We all know this. This is basic so this is um, what they do because they are not connected from the, their own supply from within. So they seek it from without. As they've mentioned here, yeah, cool. Instead, that life force energy is being collected and harvested for certain preferred groups. 
blah blah blah. It goes into some Albion body. I have not researched that. Interesting. Uh, Biowave stuff. So you can read that. You can pause the video. Etymology. Um, so the etymology of Lush apparently comes from Robert Munro in his book Far Journeys. I'm not going to go into all this apart from saying that I, I do agree with this in a sense that this is what's being not has been created but what is attempting to be created. It's not like God created us to be a like an energy farm for dark entities and that's kind of what his view like surmises. But not really, because maybe he's just having channeling just that perspective. And it's just a perspective, what he's talking about. According to Munro's informant, our creators, the cosmic energy farmers, intentionally equipped animals with devices like fangs, claws, and super speed in order to prolong predator prey combat and thereby produce more louche. So he, he's, whoever he's channeled it from, the entities are actually saying that these, you know, like the Archon. If you read into it, um, that the let's say creators of the Matrix and all this um, are actually able to uh, create form. This is where I may disagree with, because he's saying Demiurge has creation ability of creating animals and stuff. Now I don't know about this. Um, the only way, yes, I would say yes, is if um, it's it's got to do with perspective because. Um, from a perspective that a lower energy can be um, on the earth, let's just put an arbitrary time a million years ago when the matrix was created by these interdimensional archon entities, blah blah blah. Let's not get too deep into that end of things, but sort of use it to realize something that I'm trying to tell you. Um, let's just say there was uh, like sort of a certain energy around, it's a low negative demonic energy or something around the planet a million years ago, let's just say, arbitrary arbitrary amount of time. That that's what they're saying like is is able to then affect the fields of creation and then would be able to affect the six dimensional geometry and say the Fibonacci, for instance, are uh, and it may extend a an arm of the Fibonacci sequence or something, and, and maybe that's how they mean this has happened. Like, I'm, no one's actually talked about the exact dynamics. Everyone just gives the overview like this. Yeah, this is just an overview. Um, but I like to get into the dynamics of how it's actually working, and this is how I think it would happen, um, that the Demiurge would be able to affect the um, geometry and thus affect the down-dimensional creation process. And I would not, con uh, I would not um, contest that because that's highly possible, and that's actually what I think they're trying to do. So it's just a matter of understanding um, of this guy's vision, really. Um, this story told Munro, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, this is interesting. This story told to Munro, which threw him into a depression. Depression has affinity with novelty. Remember. Novelty has affinity with density of connection and realization. Yeah. See Terence McKenna's Time Wave Zero. Uh, corresponds to reports in some of the world's oldest scriptures. His whole vision here of there, there's energy harvesting like going on, uh, and Earth is like a big energy farm. The Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas. Fuck, that's interesting. That those those texts are pretty awesome. Like there are some pretty awesome insights. Those those three: the Vedas, the Upanishads, and the Puranas of India. Uh, and apparently, in those, they even mention this. Uh, there, there were read that the universe is upheld by sacrifice, Atharva Veda, and that all who are living in this world, and that would be like third dimensional meaning, are the sacrifices. There is none living who does not perform yagya sacrifice. Or the bleeding of louche is what they're trying to, uh, or the leaking of chi is what they're trying to, you know, correlate it to. These holy men of the upper shards. Uh, this body is created for sacrifice and arises out of sacrifice and changes according to sacrifice. Gabha upper shard. Interesting. And the carbon is the crunch. You know, it's hard. 
and oxygen seems to stuff up a lot of body systems, you know, it's interesting, it's all connected. So, there you go, um, I need to go to the toilet, so I, I'm going to actually stop the tape right here, right now, and let you guys look into it, I hope I've been able to um, make things clearer for you, I am Benjamin Callenberg, www.conscious.com.